you were given the opportunity to save someone's life, would you? Well, the great news is, is that we all have the ability to save someone's life by a simple decision of becoming an organ donor. Each person has the ability to save up to eight lives. Now, according to organdonor.gov, 120,889 people are currently waiting for a transplant to save their life. And in, only two, in 2012, only 28,051 people received the transplant that they needed to stay alive. That means 18 people die each day because they don't receive the organ transplant they need. So let's do a little bit of math. Assuming that we have 23 people in this classroom today, we have the ability to save up to 184 lives. Now there's a little bit of misconception when it comes to organ donation. Most people just think of the donation that occurs after you've passed away, but that's not exactly true because there's more and more live donations that's occurring today. And it really hasn't been a long, around all that long. In fact, the first live organ transplant was only completed on December 23rd of 1954, and it was actually a set of twins. Um, one twin needed a kidney transplant, and so the other one was a perfect match, and he was able to donate his kidney to save his brother's life. And the first um, deceased donation was actually only done in 1962. Now, the physician who completed both of these transplants is the famous physician in the United States known as Dr. Joseph Murray, and he's known for bringing transplant to the U.S. So being an organ donor is an easy and simple way to give hope to those who are in desperate need of sustaining their own life. So in this speech, I will briefly discuss what you can donate, how easy it is to become a donor, and the benefit that it could bring to your life. So, you might ask, what can be donated? Well, there's organ and tissues that can be donated, and we'll first briefly discuss about the live donation. So the most common one is a kidney, because medical professionals have proven that you can live with just one kidney. And other things that you can donate while you're alive are a lobe of your lung, partial liver, partial intestines, partial pancreas, and the more common one, again, is bone marrow. So Klein in Organ Donation and Utilization in the United States of 2012 says, the availability of transplanted organs over the past five years has declined. Living kidney, liver, and lung donations have also declined. Now I know the touchy subject comes when you have to talk about what you can donate after you've passed away, and I know no one really wants to think about themselves dying, but I think it's important to know how much you can help someone if you choose to become an organ donor. So you can donate eyes and corneas, your heart and your heart valves, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your intestines, your pancreas, your femoral and saphenous veins, your skin, bone, and tendons. So now that we've briefly discussed on what you can exactly donate, I'm going to now describe how you can become a donor. So who is qualified to be a donor? Everyone is. From the time we're born until the time we die, we have the ability to donate our organs if we so choose. All they ask is that you be registered in the state that you reside in, so for us it's Indiana. So I have a quote by Hyde of 2009 Student and Community Perceptions about organ donors, non-donors, and transplant recipients. I think your typical organ donor would be younger rather than older. The older they are, the less likely they are to have come to grips with the idea of organ donation, whereas younger generations have probably grown up with the idea of organ transplants. Now, there's only three exceptions on why you couldn't be an organ donor. If you have HIV, if you have active cancer, and or if you have a systemic disease, they will actually remove you off of the donor list. So, do you remember when you got your license and the BMV asked you if you wanted to become a donor? Well, that's because if you are a donor, you see this little red heart. That indicates to medical professionals that you are a donor, so in a case of emergency, they know that you are willingly able to give up your organs. Now, if you don't have that heart on your license, it's okay. You're not exempt from being a donor. You can actually go to this website, organdonor.gov, and you click on Become a Donor, and scroll down and click Register in your state to be a donor. So you just click on Indiana. Now, here's the pieces of information you need. Your name, your address, your date of birth, the last four of your social security number, and a valid email address. And really, all you have to do is click Register. And another great way to become an organ donor is just letting your friends and family know your wishes to donate your organs if something should happen. So, Hyde 2009 
2009 student community says about perceptions of organ donors, non-donors, and transplant recipients that organ donors are commonly described as selfless, generous, caring, and kind. So now that we've discussed briefly on what can be donated and how we can donate, I will now describe the benefit that it could bring to your life. How many people would save this little boy? He actually received transplants to save his life. Now look at this dad. My son, Dylan, is a superhero. We find joy and solace knowing he lives on through others. Organ donation kind of hits home for me. Um, my cousin had a rare condition that was life-altering and she ended up passing away. But she had received two kidney transplants. And both of those kidney transplants gave my family hope. They gave my family hope for just maybe a little more time. And I encourage you, by being an organ donor, you can give that hope. And you can give maybe that second chance for someone who wouldn't have had it otherwise. And I know that knowing that I could have that impact on someone's life just makes my decision that much easier to become an organ donor. And I hope that does for you too. So as we wrap up and come to a conclusion, I hope I've encouraged you to be that difference in someone's life. To be that hope for maybe their second chance. We've talked about what can be donated, how easy it is to donate, and the benefit that you can have on someone's life. So again, being an organ donor gives you the potential to give hope to those who are in a desperate need of sustaining their own life. We can save up to eight lives, and I hope you join me in being that difference today.